if you're looking for a meta, tongue-in-cheek, roll and write game about making a dice game, then you're looking for roll and write. Hey guys, and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows, and today we're looking at the game Roll and Write. The dice game is from designer Chris Handy. It's a two to five player roll and write game that plays in about 20 to 30 minutes, and it's being published by Perplex. It's coming to Kickstarter soon. We've got a prototype copy of the game, so let's get rolling and see what it looks like. To set up the game, give each player a board and a yellow inspiration card. Flip three pink award cards over in the center of the table. Deal three green game Hallmark cards and three blue equipment cards to each player and place the piles in the center along with the purple research and development deck. Each player chooses one Hallmark and one equipment card, discards the rest, and then you're ready to begin. The starting player will roll the dice and separate them into groups by color and then choose one set for themselves and then begin filling in those bits on their player board. The other players will choose between the remaining sets, and these players may choose the same set. Once everyone has marked their bits, players may then perform one action by erasing a bit from a previous turn and taking the corresponding action. For example, erasing a green bit allows the player to draw three green Hallmark cards and keep one. Whenever a player completes an equipment card or Hallmark card, it is tucked under their board and will score at the end of the game. These bits may now be used for another goal or may be erased to perform an action. Players will continue to roll and write until one player has three or fewer open spaces on their board. There is one more turn taken and then the game ends. Points are tallied and the player with the most points wins. So I think it's hilarious in this game that they decided to just go tongue-in-cheek and call it what it is. They focused on the mechanic and they've got a really nice and unique roll and write game. And they said, eh, let's just call it that and we get to go. Uh, yeah, the, the mechanics on this work very well together. Um, you have that option to take the action after you've placed your bits. And it has to be one that you haven't placed that turn. So you need to kind of plan ahead like, oh, I don't really need green, but I need some more cards. So I'll, I'll take those three green bits this turn so that in future turns I can gain more cards. So I have a little bit easier time um, with what I'm given for the turn to complete some of those goals. I do feel like in this game, you've got plenty of space to work some roll and writes, at least at the beginning, like you feel kind of trapped in what you can do. And in this one, because you can erase those bits, it is nice to just be able to say, oh, well, I could either take one blue or I could take three greens. I'm taking the three greens and I'll erase some of those puppies later. Uh, I also enjoy that you can reuse the bits after you've scored. So if you finish a pattern, you tuck that one under and you save it, and then instead of being like, oh, I got a bunch of junk on my board that I can't get rid of, now you can start moving on to that next goal card and you can use the three bits that do line up and you can erase the rest. And it really gives you a lot of flexibility. I feel like the puzzliness in this feels easier, like it's a little bit more approachable. Now to score really high points and beat someone every single time, You've still got that going on regardless of the difficulty, but it does feel a little bit easier to kind of jump into than some of the roll and rights that I've played. Yeah, those um, the three pink goal award cards at the end can't. We've had some where those have swayed the points enough that if you completely forgot about them, um, you might be in trouble towards the end. Um, those kind of also give you a goal to work towards. Uh, in addition to that inspiration card that you're given, um, sometimes uh, we've had games where oh no, I forgot I even had this card, and um, it didn't work out that the other cards that I gained during the game had those colors so in the end I didn't end up getting very many points but if you can pay attention to that and be strategic about the cards that you keep when you get to draw the blue and green cards um, you really can focus on getting a lot of points um, even if um, at first glance it may not seem that way. There are some additional nice bonus powers in there too that I don't think we mentioned. If you fill up an entire row horizontally or vertically or diagonally, you get to move an extra bit. Uh, so there's some other little bonus things that are going on. I feel there probably are kind of a lot of things to keep track of in the game, but you don't really have to optimize and use all of them necessarily to win. If you've got a good card that gives you points for having 
purples and greens next to each other, like you can just go crazy on that and pull in a lot of points. It's a little bit point salad in a good way that you have a lot mm -hmm. of options, lots of different paths to victory. Um, there, one problem I could see being a difficulty for some people is that this doesn't really offer any ways to mitigate color blindness. I think one thing you could do is if you were a player that is color blind, instead of solidly filling in those circles, you could make a shape in there instead so that you personally can keep track of the different colors if you have an issue with color blindness. Other downside, only barely, is that with some roll and rights, you could literally have like 100 people play it. In this one, you kind of do need that dry erase board. You do need the colored markers. You have to share those when you're taking turns with each other. But I think it's made for six players, five mm -hmm. players. Um, so, you know, it's a game. You're supposed to have five players. It's good. You're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, the it does it does mention the rules. You need to be kind and share the markers, um, which I think was a funny addition. Um, the artwork is good for this. I like the style. Um, they did a good job of kind of incorporating um, some of that. Um, trying to sit there working at your desk. Um, your board is a desk where you're trying to organize those bits and, and come up with a mechanic for your dice game that you are creating. Uh, so I think they did a good job with that. Yeah, it's a fun theme. Obviously, we were looking at prototype components. I'll expect the final game to have you know nice quality cards and printed die and things like that. But I'm sure you'll see that. So be sure to check out their campaign. Look for those stretch goals. See what all is incorporated. Uh, if it sounds like Roll and Write would be the game for you, then definitely get on their campaign and give them a backing number. Uh, we appreciate you guys joining us for our reviews. We love putting these things out. Give us your comments. Let us know what your favorite Roll and Write game is. And then be sure to subscribe and follow along for more videos coming all the time. Backer number? I don't really know what I meant by that, but we're just going to roll with it. It is a one, two to five. Um, and, and that choice... Deal three, gr <laughs> these words are hard. Green. <laughs> Game Hallmark Sorry, card. Sorry, one more time. It sounded sad like you were reading. <laughs> That's because I can't say it. Okay.